Hi everyone, you're done with the Civil War unit. I'm so proud of you. I hope you've enjoyed it. Now, I thought it would be fun for us to have a culminating activity to make sure that you remember uh, by experiencing the Civil War. I have three different options for you uh, today that you can pick from and this is going to be a project where you just take in everything that you remember about the Civil War and you experience it through writing a story or by making a drawing or by uh, making um, a model of what you have learned and so let me give you some details on what that is all right so the first one uh, you can either make Harriet Tubman's Underground Railroad and I'm going to read a book to you about it so that you'll understand it and this is our full directions of instructions on how to how to do this uh, project and um, I've mentioned to your parents that you can take clay or Play-Doh or pieces of paper, your crayons or markers, whatever you have at home, and you can create your own underground railroad. And so I, if, you, if this is your option, then I'm going to read you the story, then I'm going to play the song for you so that you can uh, learn the song and um, memorize it because it's a great catchy song and it talks to you about uh, their experience on the Underground Railroad. I don't want to give you too much information because I'm about to read it to you. So let me do that. And then we'll listen to the song. Alright, so the Drinking Gourd, Follow the Drinking Gourd, Story and Pictures by Jeanette Winter. Long ago, before the Civil War, there was an old sailor called Peg Leg Joe who did what he could to help free the slaves. Joe had a plan. He used hammer and nail and saw and work for the master, the man who owned slaves on the cotton plantation. Joe had a plan. At night when work was done, he'd teach the slaves a song that secretly told the way to freedom. Just follow the drinking gourd, he said. When the song was learned and sung all day, Peg Leg Joe would slip away to work for another master and teach the song again. One day, a slave called Molly saw her man, James, sold to another master. James would be taken away, their family torn apart just one more night together. Quail called in the trees that night. Molly and James remembered Joe's song. They sang it low. When the sun comes down and the first quail calls, follow the drinking gourd. For the old man is waiting for to carry me to freedom. If you follow the drinking gourd, they look to the sky and they saw the stars. Can you see the drinking gourd?
taking their little son Isaiah and old Patty and her grandson George and Molly and James set out for freedom that very night following the stars of the drinking gourd. They ran all night through the fields till they crossed the stream to the woods. Pay attention to the pictures because the pictures tell you the setting of where they had to cross. There's trees, there's streams, there's fields. When daylight came, they hid in the trees, watching, listening for the master hounds set loose to find them. Oh, look at those scary dogs. But the dogs lost the runaways sent at the stream, and Molly and James and Isaiah and old Hattie and young George were not found. Whew. They hid all day in the woods. Do you see them? They're hiding in that hollow tree. At night, they walked again, singing Joe's song and looking for the signs that marked the trail. The river bank makes a very good road. The dead trees will show you the way. Left foot, peg foot, traveling on. Follow the drinking gourd. There's the drinking gourd. Do you see how she's pointing to it? So she sees it. What is the drinking gourd? Is that the Big Dipper? Is that a constellation that they're calling the drinking gourd? Walking by night, sleeping by day, for weeks they traveled on, sometimes berries to pick and corn to snatch, sometimes fish to catch. Sometimes empty bellies to sleep on. Sometimes no stars to guide the way. They never knew what lie ahead. And there they are hiding in a cemetery. There was danger from men who, who would send them back and danger from hungry beasts but sometimes a kind deed was done. One day, as they hid in a thicket, a boy from a farm found them in a bag of feed for the hogs in the wood. He brought bacon and cornbread to share. Swinging, singing low, they traveled on. The river ends between the hills. Follow the drinking gourd. There's another river on the other side. Follow the drinking gourd. So do you see how they're giving? Um, Peg Leg Joe is giving them a map to follow in the song but they had to keep it secret because if they did it, the masters would, would find out and then they would get in a lot of trouble. So here they are, they're on a hill and they have followed the drinking gourd. On and on they followed the trail to the river's end. From the top of the hill, they saw the new path, another river beneath the stars to lead them to freedom land. The drinking gourd led them on. The song was almost done. When the great big river meets the little river, follow the drinking gourd. For the old man is waiting for to carry you to freedom if you follow the drinking gourd. Okay, so here we go. So then they climbed the last hill. Down below was Peg Leg Joe, waiting at the wide Ohio River to carry them across. <sighs> Wonderful. So there's Peg Leg Joe. They're getting closer. Their spirits rose when they saw the old man, Molly and James, Isaiah and old Hattie and George ran to the shore.
Under the starry sky, Joe rowed them across the white old river. He told them of hiding places where they would be safe. A path of houses stretched like a train on a secret track leading north to Canada. He called it the Underground Railroad. It carried riders to freedom. The first safe house stood on a hill. The lamp was lit, which meant it was safe to come. Ragged and weary, they waited while Joe signaled low with a hoot, with a hoot like an owl. Then the door opened wide to welcome the freedom travelers. Almost done. They rushed to the house, to the barn, to for, for the farmers knew there was, there were slave catchers near. So they have to hide them. And here they're hiding under the barn. They have to make sure that they're safe. And then they get to rest here for many days and healed their wounds. Soft beds, full meals, new clothes, hot baths washed away some fear and pain. Isaiah smiled. And so here they're still having to travel. So they find a home. It says when they were strong, they traveled again from house to house on the underground trail, still following the drinking Board. Sometimes they traveled on foot, sometimes by cart, by wagon that carried fruit to market and the runaways to freedom. And now at last they came to the shores of Lake Erie, Molly and James and Isaiah, old Hattie and young George climbed aboard the steamship that would carry them across to Canada to freedom. Five more souls are safe, old Hattie cried. The sun shone bright when they stepped on land. They had followed the drinking gourd. So now we're gonna listen to the song together. Um, and while Asher's getting that ready, Asher, is there any way we could see the picture of the video so they can see it all together? Yes. And while Asher's doing that, I'm gonna show you what Noah made. And here is the, the little river that meets the big river and the two hills, between the two hills. And then here's his little boat and it's a little, it's a little uh, mama and her baby crossing over. And then here's the quail in the tree. And so he used crayons and we just used a little cardboard uh, from a box. And then he just used some clay, but you could also make, make use it out of construction paper or it can be flat, whatever you'd like if you wanna make your, un your own underground railroad and make your own um, map of how to get to freedom. All right. So this is, he's not done yet, but this is kind of just the starting the quail and then the rivers and then the two hills and then the little boat that carried them to freedom. All right, let's go ahead and start. <laughs> 